I'm going to talk about uh, probably three and a half things. The first is housing, the second is the OCP, and the third is the overall design of the site. Um, I want to talk about something that didn't happen tonight. And I don't know if any other council councillors made note of this, but it struck me at a certain point how positively people were talking about affordable housing. We've sat in these chambers for many hearings for low cost affordable housing provided by nonprofit housing providers and sometimes we've heard stigma against poor people. Uh, we've all heard all sorts of things about uh, terrible people who are going to live in these buildings uh, and that didn't happen tonight. And not only did that not happen tonight, the opposite happened. People from across the community, from various professions, various walks of life came and talked about the need for this housing and I cannot say how happy I am about that and I also cannot say how I hope that tonight and the support for this affordable housing on this site sets the tone for how we talk about low-cost affordable housing even for and especially for people who are living on income assistance so it really this is the first hearing that I've sat through at as a councillor and then mayor where there's been no negativity about providing affordable housing and not only no negativity but such strong support so I'm very heartened by that and hopefully tonight's hearing sets a precedent for how we talk about affordable housing in our community going forward on the note of affordable housing, uh, that is uh, one of the things that we are uh, allowed to consider uh, in this project and, and as a consideration in our decision making this evening. And I don't need to repeat all of the things that the speakers said. Uh, we need more affordable housing and we need more affordable housing in the downtown. And we need it for all of the reasons that speakers have alluded to this evening. The last significant investment of affordable housing in the downtown uh, was in 1998, uh, just up the way there in, uh, on Pandora Street, and it's run by the Kool-Aid Society. So that's a heck of a long time to go in the middle of a housing crisis with no significant affordable housing, uh, new affordable housing in the downtown. Um, on that note, and I'll just wade briefly into the design of the building at this point, uh, I think these folks are setting a very high standard for what affordable housing can and should look like. This is a beautiful building. It's a beautiful building filled with amenities. It's a beautiful building filled uh, with accessible units for people who need them. Uh, it's a beautiful building that is going to build community. And it's an inclusive development where um, everyone, as, as one of the younger speakers from Sanit said, where everyone gets to live together. And I think that's very, very uh, important and for me very moving. Um, and uh, I just want to uh, reiterate back um, what one of the uh, staff from uh, Pacifica said, and I got a bit choked up at that point. She said, um, this building is 130 yeses to the people on my wait list. And that's really powerful. So I'm very supportive of the housing and uh, I think it does belong in this place and belongs with this development. Um, the other consideration for us this evening is, is this the right place for a fire hall? Um, I can tell you as somebody who lived across from fire hall number one for five years in a heritage uh, house with single panes, um, that it wasn't the fire trucks that were uh, disturbing, it was the diesel buses going up the hill on Johnson Street. So in terms of the disruption of a fire hall to a neighbourhood, uh, particularly with all of the things that the Chief has told us will be in place, uh, I think this is the right place for a fire hall. Uh, there's been a lot of comments tonight about the official community plan and I think one of the problems with the official community plan and the way that it's used sometimes as it's is that it's wielded as a shield against change. And I don't think that's right. When the official community plan was approved in 2012, we weren't in the middle of a housing crisis. And if we were, we might have approved a different kind of official community plan. And in 2012, when the official community plan was approved, we were in the middle of a climate crisis, but no one had called it that yet. And now we've called it that. And putting this amount of housing and this amount of density on this site, it both responds to the housing crisis as I've already outlined, but it also responds to the climate crisis. Um, as one of the uh, gentlemen near the end said, this is planning 101. We mitigate greenhouse gas emissions by putting people where they want to live, where they can walk to work, where they can walk to amenities. So if we had uh, declared a climate emergency and been in the middle of a housing crisis when we approved the OCP in 2012, it probably would have looked like a very different document. And so our responsibility now is to look at the reality around us and to amend the document accordingly as needed. So I think this is the right amount of density in the right place, in the right way, at the right time. 
And I'll just end by commenting on the overall design of the site. Um, future councils, or depending on how quickly the applicant works, this council will get to see uh, development permits for the next three phases, and I look forward to that opportunity. Uh, but even without seeing those, I see a sensitively laid out site. I see a park, pocket park uh, where the public will be able to gather. Uh, and I see a fire hall building that looks like it belongs in a spectacular city. And I think that that is the kind of fire hall and the kind of development and the kind of site uh, planning that we want to see in the spectacular city, which happens to also be our city. So I will uh, leave it at that and turn it to Councillor Loveday as the seconder, and then I'll look for other speakers.